tattoos this morning on this feeder. Uh, and oh, look at that. The Corella chased them away. Corella's half their size. He's a bit of a bully, chases them away. It's their own fault, they just let him take their food. <laughs> the lorikeet's giving you a hard time too, are they? <laughs> lorikeet's on one feeder, Corella on the other. You guys need to stick up for yourselves, hey? Yes, you do. Can't let the little birds push you around. Why don't you go over and eat at their other feeder? You're just going to be left with the scraps, are you? Alright, I'll see you later then. G'day guys, welcome back. I'm going to do a flip cup haul for you today, or two flip cups using the Montmartre Studio Acrylics. You may remember I only bought the a blue, a green, a turquoise, uh, a black and a white initially and I mixed and matched colours so that I could just try them out. So that was one of them that I did in my blues and greens, basically blues. Turned out really, really pretty. It, um, it has a bit of a sheen to it. They feel different, the Montmartre paints, to the globals. And then I also did the green, mainly green, but threw a little bit of blue in there. So my other paints have arrived. So I'm going to go with some warm colours as well today. I think it's always a good test for paints when you can do primary colours and, uh, and see what happens. So I have got white. I've just put these into other containers because I buy them in these big bottles and they're really really hard and I have trouble pouring out just enough to go into my cup so I put them into these um, and then I can easily measure out so this is what I'm using the Montmartre Studio acrylic um, yeah I've ordered some more colors so I have got the white and that one is the brilliant red that I just showed you and that one's the warm yellow this one, turquoise, I mixed with the turquoise with a little bit of blue and some white to get that shade. Matches my coastal turquoise colour that I tend to use. This one is a navy that I made. So again, I used the blue and some black to make navy. And then I made Naples yellow as well. Um, with, um, oh, I did use a little bit of raw... Raw sienna, I think, because that's come in now. Raw sienna and the yellow and some white to make up a, a Naples yellow. So that's it. Uh, Pori medium is 60 parts Elmer's glue wall to 40 parts of water. The Montmartre seems to be thicker than the global, so I've had to reduce the amount of glue I put in here. And uh, the warm colours have had a little splash of water as well, just to bring them to the right consistency. Now... For cells, I'm going to use my usual, the Treadmill Belt Lubricant, which is 100% silicone. I get that from eBay. It's pretty expensive with postage. I think it's about $60, but look, a bottle will last you a year. I'm just going to do three drops. Can I do three drops? Yeah, I'll do three drops. I won't do the white. Uh, the white's an opaque colour, so I'll just let it do its thing. I don't know why we don't put oil in the opaques. I don't know. One day I'm just going to try it. I'll just do like two in all of them. Give it a really, really good stir. Now I'm doing another little experiment today. I want to see if using a little bit more paint is a good thing. Because lately, if you saw my sandwich pause, you've seen that lately um, I've been torching later. When I first started pouring... Uh, three years ago, I would flip my, kip, my cups over and torch straight away and then tilt that way and that way and of course my cells all stretched out of shape. And then it occurred to me that maybe I'll tip, 
I flip my cups over, tilt half the canvas, then torch, then I only have to tilt halfway. That worked great too. But lately I've been flipping the cups, tipping halfway, tipping the other way, covering pretty much the whole canvas and then torching and then just tilting just a little bit. That way I don't overstretch my cells, eh? Makes sense. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do that again, but just try with a little bit more paint. I think I'll probably go with, how many layers am I gonna have? I think I'll just do two layers. So I'll use half what's in there for the first layer. I'm putting the turquoise next to the yellow. Hopefully it'll be all right. I wouldn't put it like if it was a bright yellow, I wouldn't because it would go too green, but we'll see what happens. And I like turquoise and orange together, so that can go there. Be a good test, I think, for these this brand of paint to see what bright colours do. Because, you know, if you're using lots of bright colours and um, different primary colours, you do tend to get mud. So it's a bit tricky. I have done it previously before. I've used really bright colours. Um, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. Actually should have probably put that there, but then I didn't want the dark red next to the dark blue either because they're both dark colours and uh, it's, it would be hard to see the cells with two dark colours next to each other. So I always try and go light, dark, light, dark. That way I get um, maybe a dark ring around a light cell or um, a light ring around a dark cell. That's why I do it that way, just alternate light, dark, light, dark. And that gives me the best results I find. So I haven't been using the Mock Mark for long. I'm still sort of trying to work out a good consistency, like a good ratio. Well, not a good consistency because I know what the consistency should be, but a good ratio that I can just go, okay, this is one to one. You will have to always add a touch of water to some paints. The, the warm colours, um, like the oranges and the browns, oh, always give me grief. They're always thicker. It must have something to do with the pigments. And then a lot of times the, the turquoises and the blues will be a lot thinner. Oh, it's getting hot in the studio. I'm going to have to turn the aircon on in a minute. It's going to be 30 degrees tomorrow. Tomorrow's a public holiday here in Queensland. It's going to be 30 degrees Celsius. That's a hot day. Considering it's um, sunny spring, I think we're going to be in for a hot summer, which I really detest the heat. Just as well, I've got an air-conditioned studio, an air-conditioned house. I go to work and it's air-conditioned. I get in my car and it's air-conditioned. I go to the shopping centre, it's air-conditioned. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to survive. It's just too hot. Way, way too hot. The red looks thicker. You can see how the reds, see the lines in there? You can see how they're still in their lines, whereas the others, when you pour them in, they kind of just sort of flatten out. They don't stay up in their, their little lines. So the red is a little bit thicker still. I did add a splash of water to it, but it obviously needed a little bit more. Should be all right, you know, it's mixed in there with all the other colors. If they were all that thick, it would be a problem. But um, see how the white there kind of flattens out? It's not staying in a ridge. The red just stayed in Little Ridge for quite a while. And I'm just going to do a, like a, I'm not sure, I'm just going to flip it over. I'm not going to do a flip and drag, I don't think. You do kind of have to drag a little bit, otherwise you'll just have a big blob of paint and it'll kind of just run off. So because it's a rectangle canvas, you do have to just tip your cup a little bit. But I'm not going to do my traditional, like I would, you know, do like a three cup flip and drag on this to get stripes. But I just want to see what happens if I just do a flip cup on it. 
without too much of a drag. We'll have to do a little drag, but you know, the faster you drag your cups, if you have lots of cups uh, with less paint and you fast, you drag them pretty fast, that's when you get your stripes. So if you don't want stripes, don't do that. Just kind of flip them over gently. All right, you can sit there for a minute. Okay, let's give that a, a little bit of time to come down. I did spray the cups with my silicone spray, so it shouldn't take too long to, to pop down. Um, just trying to see. Um, Oh, this one I did quite a while ago. Turned out still quite nice. That was with the Elmer's School Glue. So I had the warm yellow and the warm red and the turquoise navy. That turned out pretty good. Not a lot of mud. Oh, a little bit over here where it's gone that sort of icky green colour. Actually, I think I might have had black in it. That's why. Because yellow and black make this baby poo green colour. That's one of them. Um, actually, I probably showed you, should have shown you this one. This one's a better example, if I can get it. So it's pretty much the same colours I'm using today. Got the navy, got the turquoise, uh, the warm red, the warm yellow. Um, we've got some blue in there. So yeah, it's probably more close to the colours I'm using today. So we'll see. That was global. So we'll see um, what the difference is, hey? That was done quite a while ago. I was still learning. Oh, learning every day, hey? Okay, let's do this. Well, that's a lot of red. Where did you come from? Turn you around, see if I can get some different colours coming up on the second one. A bit more yellow on that one. And again, I don't know why it happens. If I flip cups the other way, I get a different colour. Bizarre. Okay, so now I'm going to, normally I would talk straight away. As I said, I'm moving away from that and I'd rather have quality in cells over the quantity, like the size of the cell. So let's get this paint moving. So try not to lose too much off the sides just yet. You want to cover that. So as I always do, walk the paint back and forth. Got plenty here, but still, because you've got plenty doesn't mean that you can waste it. I'm not going to go over the corners just yet. I can go over them later once I've torched and I've got the cells up. And then I want to stretch them a little bit more. So I'm going to have to try and get rid of that blob. I didn't do that very well, did I? You can help the paint along. You can do that with your finger. See that just covered that and I didn't have to tilt there. Um, I do want to get rid of that blob there, but I'm going to, I'm going to torch first. Let me wipe my hands. So I've still got plenty of paint there. I still want to cover my corners, but I'm going to do it after I've torched. That way the cells will come up and then I can still stretch them a little bit. Can't I? Yes. Hopefully we'll get pretty coloured cells coming through this background colour. So again, torch nice, up and high, not too close. Less is more when you're torching, getting your cells up. Less cells, I think. It's better. 
my cells that are coming up are really quite small, which is telling me that my mix is still a bit thick. But we'll stretch them out and see what happens. If your cells are too big at this stage, once you start tilting and stretching them, they just get really, really out of shape because they're too long. Oh, see, I got too close there. I've got a caterpillar because so I got too close. Oh, all right, that's enough. That is enough. I might be able to tilt that over. Now I'm just going to give that just a few seconds just for the cells to come up um, and grow a little bit. And then we can start tilting. Some really pretty multi rings there. You won't be able to see from all the way up there, but they're really pretty. Okay, now, see there's lots of paint on there. Look at the jiggle jiggle. So I'm just going to go left and right because that stretches the cells to the sides. And then as I do that, carefully make my way down the canvas. So you don't just tip, you kind of hold your canvas kind of straight. And then just give it a little tip. How pretty is that, hey? Really opening up those cells. All right, so that's the one side done. I got rid of my big blob that I wanted to. Now the same thing, I'm going to go back down that way. I'm going to zigzag left and right. No point just going straight down. It's going to have really long, elongated cells, so don't do that. If you want some off the side here, do it now while the weight of the paint is in the middle. Just wanted to get rid of that little caterpillar thingy. Go over that corner. Now, to get to that corner, oh, there's another fly in here. To get to that corner is going to be quite tricky. I would have to take a lot of paint down there. Don't know if I want to do that. Just remember your 70-30 rule. If you like it 70%, leave it. Because I can pretty much guarantee if I head for that corner there, I'll be happy with that corner. But the rest of it will be all overstretched and I will hate it and I wish that I never gone to that corner so just leave it yeah it's it's got a few little stripes here and there that doesn't bother me I'll put a few little cells in there it looks as if there's something in that paint doesn't it maybe I didn't stir it properly yeah I think it's just a blob of paint Goes. <laughs> that was just a tiny little tilt. It wasn't very big. You can see though that my cells are starting to, to stretch out of shape. Okay, now how are we going for colours? Do you like the colours? The brightness of them? I think they're really pretty. The red, the red sure took over, didn't it? This one. Maple's yellow, you can't see a lot of it. I like that we've still got some white there. That's the other one. It's got, obviously it's got a lot of blue here and it's got a lot of yellow there. This one is, I think, more red. Maybe I'd have to cut down on the red next time. Shoe fly, you just wait. I'm going to spot you in a minute. Now I'm going to put a, little, a few little cells here and just over there. Up 
popping bubbles, putting a, putting a few little cells in. Not too many, just a few. Okay, that's enough. Just a little sprinkling of cells. See how they come up and they look really cute? They're only little, just there and there. Wish I could get to that corner. I can't though. Well, I can, but I'd ruin it. Straighten my lines. I always straighten my lines, don't I? It's just my thing. Can't help it. Straighten my lines. I have two cups, you see, so where the two cups join, you do tend to get a line. But that's okay. It's not it's not a very distinct line. It's it's pretty good. Okay, now I've got a few little corners just to cover up. I probably could have tipped more off at the beginning. Um, but if you tip too much paint off early, you don't have enough paint left on the surface um, to make pretty cells. Like if, if you tip a lot off, your layer that you've got left is really thin and uh, it's just too thin to produce multi-coloured cells. So I think, I think I've done well. I think I've been very restrained with my tilting just tilt it enough to cover the surface and then um, yeah torched as you saw and that brought up little cells and then all we had to do was just tilt a little bit more and see how they're really pretty shapes they're not they're not overstretched they're really pretty I could have done less torching you know if I wanted more minimal cells But um, no, I'm happy with that. I'll take you down for a close-up. Actually, I'll show you the difference. So all the cells on here, are, I guess 99% of them are a nice shape. Look at that daddy there. Look at that. Wobbly, blobby, kind of blurred, a bit muddy there. I mean, I've got some pretty cells, you know, multi-ringed cells. But overall, I think I used to, I think this was one that I had with um, Floetrol because it gives this scaling. But you see the difference of the cells to these cells. This is my progression. I used to do paintings like this. They were kind of big and blobby. And now the cells are pretty and round. So, <laughs> well, look at that one. Well, I'm going to take you down and shake that one. Oh, here's a pretty one. So, yeah, it's just practice. It's progression. You learn from your mistakes. And um, you move on, and hopefully you do better work as you learn. And as you practice. It's taken me three years. Oh, look at that. Look how bright they are. I can focus. There we go. Look at those little ones that I torched afterwards. What was the one I was saying? Look at that. It's got a Naples yellow ring and it's got the turquoise. It's got this little blob of red in the middle. Even those little tiny ones, they've got the Naples yellow around. Blue ring. Oh, look at that blue one there. It's got a dark blue turquoise and then the dark blue in the middle. So much to look at. I could look at cells all day. Actually even got a little bit of pink happening there, haven't we? From where the red was next to the white. A little bit of pink happening there. And then over here in the white, that's just where I had a very light sprinkle with the torch to get some little babies up. Just so it wasn't too blank. I have trouble with this camera focusing. I have to keep touching the screen to let it focus. Maybe I'm just moving it too fast. Maybe. But look at those cells. They are just gorgeous. And then over here into this red area. 
I maybe need to start torching less, bringing up less cells. What do you think? Because the cells that are more individual, you know, like that, they have their own space. They don't bump into anybody else, so they keep their round shape. When you torch too close and you get a bit of a cluster, they kind of bump into each other a little bit and lose their, their round shape. Look at those. So, yeah, overall, really, really happy with the, um, the Montmartre. Uh, you can, I think, get Montmartre pretty much worldwide. Just go to the Montmartre website and you can put in your area and it'll tell you where your closest distributor is, so that's a good thing. Yep. Okay. Um, I would like to do these colours again, and I think maybe I'll reduce the red and increase the, um, the warm yellow, just because it's a little bit on the dark side for me. But hey, look, if, if I do that and I go, oh, it's too yellow, like, you know, I, I just won't be happy either way. So look, they're all different. They're all lovely. All right, have a play. Jump on the Australian Acrylic Pouring Group. Show me your work. I'd love to see it. And hit the little bell to um, subscribe and be notified of my next painting. Um, I've got some big ones coming up. Uh, I'm going to do one for my bedroom, which is going to be very soon in greys and peach and pink so that one's going to come up soon so i'll see you soon thanks for watching bye for now